All right, I am going to just very briefly um, talk about Chapter 2. Uh, most of it, um, you will not be responsible for this level of detail, um, but you will use this to complete your brain and nervous system function chart. Um, just like we were talking about in kinesiology when we talked about anatomical position and that sort of thing, um, we have the same planes through the brain. Um, so sagittal divides the brain into left and right portions, horizontal divides into top and bottom halves, and coronal divides into anterior and posterior portions. Um, so when we're looking at neuroanatomy, um, we, we have those same three planes. The learning objectives, um, and part of this is in um, Chapter 3, uh, given a case study, you should be able to identify whether the speed of onset is acute, subacute, or chronic. And why is white matter white and gray matter gray? Pretty simple. Um, white and gray matter are the visible cellular distinctions in the central nervous system. So the gray matter of the central nervous system primarily contains neuron cell bodies and dendrites. So this part... Um, the part around the cortex you see that looks gray um, is neuron cell bodies and dendrites. That's where information is integrated. That's where neurotransmitters are created. That's where the neuron does, that's where the cell bodies are. So white matter, and that is um, in this picture, it's the stuff that's white. So, I mean, it makes it easy. Gray, gray matter is gray and white matter is white. Um, just by color. The reason that white matter is white is because it contains myelin. So um, the white matter is the axons. The cell bodies are in the gray matter and the axons are in the white matter. Axons are projections of nerve cells that usually convey information away from the cell body. Um, axons convey information um, between different parts of the nervous system. So myelin consists of cells that insulate the electrical conduction of axons, and we will talk about those individually in the cellular chapter. Um, areas with large proportions of myelin appear white in imaging and, if you're physically looking at a brain, because of the high fat content of myelin. So um, it shows up as white. So the answer to the question, why is white matter white and gray matter gray? Um, white matter has myelin in it, and it has a high fat content. It's insulating those axons of the cells, and the gray matter is the cell bodies. So the peripheral nervous system um, is carrying information either toward or away from the central nervous system. Um, I'm going to just briefly go over each of these, and then you can uh, go over in detail uh, looking at the book or looking at the PowerPoint. Um, the peripheral nervous system um, components include the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So um, we will talk about each of those individually in their individual chapters. The central nervous system has three regions, the spinal system, brainstem and cerebellar uh, region, and the cerebrum. So the fourth region that we're going to talk about is the peripheral region. Um, the spinal region is, uh, in, is made up of gray matter and white matter, just like the um, cerebrum is. The gray matter form, in a cross-section forms a shape similar to the letter H surrounded by white matter. Um, so that's where our cell bodies are in the spinal cord, and the white matter is the tracks of axon that are conveying that information to and from the central nervous system. So the spinal region, its main function is to convey information between the peripheral and the central nervous system and to process information. So um, the, the spinal region does processing as well as just conveying information. Um, the brain stem is um, at the top of the spinal cord and below the uh, cerebrum. Um, I won't go specifically into detail, but there's lots of stuff going on in the brainstem, and we'll talk about that in a later chapter. Cranial nerves are basically the peripheral nervous system of the head. 
and um, there are 12 of them, and we will um, talk about their individual things. All of the cranial nerves emerge from the surface of the brain. The cerebellum is in the posterior um, inferior part of the brain, and um, the cerebellum's main function is to coordinate movements. It also has a huge function in motor learning. Um, the cerebrum, also known as the diencephalon, um, includes of the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the epithalamus, and the subthalamus. So any um, structure that has the word thalamus in it is part of the diencephalon. And lots of important um, body functions go on in the diencephalon. The cerebrum itself is the two cerebral hemispheres. They're divided by a longitudinal fissure, um, and the surfaces of the cerebral hemispheres are marked by rounded elevations called gyri. A single one is a gyrus, and um, grooves called sulci, and a single one is a sulcus. So each one of the, the gyres and sulci have um, individual names, you will not be responsible for knowing the individual names of those, but just know that they do. And even though everybody's brain is a little bit different, we have very similar structures, so that's why things can be named. Um, the cerebral hemispheres, there are six of them, um, six lobes really, um, and there are six lobes on each side, so each hemisphere. The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the limbic, which is um, interior, and the um, insular lobe. So the surface of the cerebral hemispheres is called the cerebral cortex, and that's where the bodies of the cerebral neurons live. Um, that's where all of our processing um, and memory goes on. It's the site for reasoning and nonverbal communication and language and intelligence and personality. So the cerebrum has a lot going on. Um, within the gray matter, there are some different interior structures, the basal ganglia, the amygdala, um, the hippocampus. We'll talk about all these individual areas. Um, the brain is um, nourished and protected by the cerebral spinal fluid system. Um, it's, the CSF circulates from cavities inside the brain to the surface of the CNS, and it's reabsorbed into the venous blood system. So it's, it provides buoyancy and nutrition to the brain. We'll talk more about this in its specific chapter, too. Um, so there, the cerebral spinal fluid system is separate into ventricles and meninges. So um, th this just elaborates on the um, ventricle system. And um, the meninges are the membranous coverings of the brain and spinal cord. There are three layers, the dura mater, the arachnoid, and the pia mater. And um, we will talk about those more specifically in the CSF chapter as well. Um, there are two pairs of arteries that supply blood to the brain, very important. Two internal carotid arteries and two vertebral arteries. They run through, the, the vertebral arteries run through the transverse foramina of the cervical spine. Remember those guys from kinesiology? Um, very important, supplying the brain with blood and nutrients and oxygen. The blood supply to the brain has um, lots of different um, branches and um, and individual arteries, and we will talk more about that in the blood supply chapter. So um, lots of different uh, arteries and branches of arteries because we need a lot of blood to support our brain functions.